Hi, my name is Ivona and today I'm going to show you how to replace a sky in Photoshop. This is a more complicated situation because we have all those trees. I already recorded one video where you can see how to replace a sky with a more simple situation when you have a horizon line or line of the trees which is a straight line and you don't have anything like this so then you can use just a layer mask and to know how to do that and this is very very quick just go to my video I can link that this um, video here but now I want to show you a more complicated situation and it's a situation very good when you have this really like overcast or just white sky in your image and you want to have a little more colorful and this always makes your images look a little better and I'm I, I'm pretty sure that most of the clients are going to be very happy seeing a little more colorful images they look so much more professional and they look so much more um, interesting so for that I prepared some skies for you you can take your own skies sure but if you want to have a lot of them, a lot of like different options, just go to my website to have, you can find the link below and download the skies. Uh, so you have a lot of options and just go to my skies. And for this, this one, I'm going to choose um, sky number three. And this is the very important part. You have to choose a sky which really matches your image. You first, try to look at the image and how the light looks on them see there is a really pretty highlight here which is not very harsh but not um, not a soft one so you can probably if you're thinking about how the day would look it was probably sunset and it was um there were probably some some clouds in the sky so it wasn't very very harsh it was like after sunset um type of of light there so try to use one of those um, orangey uh, skies with some clouds but I think that um, not one of those dark clouds because that that would not match the image so I'm gonna choose number three and I'm just gonna grab it and drag and just drop it on my image and it should just appear as a new layer uh, so there's a layer one with the kids and there's a second layer here that is called the sky, sky number three. So I'm just going to place it over here and drag this um, this square here and just make it bigger. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with, uh, with the sky. This, the light was probably coming from here so that kind of like matches. I think that the sky might be a little too dark, um, but it's up to you. I, I believe that it should be brighter, that this is the original sky and it was very, very bright. Probably there was some information, but for the purpose of this video, I will not darken and, and, and try to look for the original detail. I want to add this sky. And, um, but the thing that just grabs my attention to the fact that this cloud is very sharp and this tree is less sharp. Of course, the, uh, the uh, focus was on the kids, so everything behind them was more and more and more blurred. So meaning that the cloud was actually further away than the tree and it should be even more blurred. In this case, it's sharper, so it doesn't look very good, but we are going to um, take care of that in a moment. First thing I just apply uh, the the size of the sky and a placement and now we're going to do the simplest thing in the world just go here when it says normal and change that to multiply and suddenly there you have there you have it it's it's almost it's almost done <laughs> the only thing that bothers me is of course the line so you can see that the line that the, the sky was nicely placed and it's so much more visible on the white sky than it is it is on on the on the darker parts of this of those bushes so what we should do about the, that one thing you can do and it's always good to just do that is just to apply a layer mask and just brush off some parts of it like this, this line here so go here click this and take a brush 
and there is a video that I uh, that I already made about how how I use my brushes. So go to that video and I try to link it below here, and then I will you will know why I use flow. So let's just use a lower flow, keep the opacity to 100. I'm just gonna brush over here. I'm also going to brush on that windmill here because I don't want to have any clouds on it. So that looks pretty good. Um, sometimes brushing over that can not, won't be that easy. So um, there's another thing you can do and that's a little more advanced. I'll try to explain that to you very quickly. There's a really good video on my website where I explain that a little better. Uh, it's um, it's on in a Photoshop and Lightroom collection, and it's about the boy with the dog looking at the sky. Where I explain that uh, how to replace the sky in a little more advanced way. Uh, double click on this image. And we're going to click option here. So what am I doing here, right? I want to tell Photoshop to show the sky overlay only where, where the underlying layer here is dark. Uh, sorry, is bright. So do not show it if it's dark. Um, that's why I'm just going to use this uh, blend if underlying layer is. And I have this arrow, I can move it around because I'm going to do a great job here. But the trick is to click Alt or Option on the keyboard to separate those two arrows and just move one up. And that already made a really pretty good job with removing some of um, of the sky. But this is like an extra thing, you don't have to do it if, if your sky already looks good with just with a layer mask. And um, Okay, so we've all, we are almost done. The two things that did not match, in my opinion, was one thing that the sky, I felt like the sky was too dark. And the other thing is that I think it should be more blurred. And that's that's definitely one of the most common mistakes that people do not blur those skies and they look awful and they do not know why. Uh, so let's just blur the sky. And for that, you can just go and use the Gaussian blur, which is fine and it will totally work. I prefer to use tilt shift because sometimes in some situations where I have mm, like a sun or, uh, or a moon and um, so that in those situations Gaussian blur would also blur the moon in a very soft way. Whilst when you were actually trying to achieve blur with the camera, then the blur would go to a bokeh dot, which is actually not a very soft edge. The, the edge of the bokeh is quite sharp. So tilt shift, I believe tilt shift actually um, fakes the natural blur better than, than Gaussian blur in this case. So I'll just go to tilt shift. And tilt shift works pretty, pretty funny because uh, it, will, it will blur everything it won't it wouldn't blur and blur anything between those two lines it starts blurring this direction here up and um, and after this dashed line it's completely blurred and it also works the other way around so um, it doesn't blur here and it starts blurring here and after um, after you cross that line it the blur is 100 percent so I'll just move this up because I want to have all my sky blurred and I'm just gonna move my blur and I'm just watching the, the clouds here I, I'm trying to achieve a, a like, little more blur than uh, I already have on, on those trees and that looks so much more natural so I really do emphasize that you should do that with every sky just make sure that it, the blur matches and click OK so I'm pretty happy well, I could, I could make it a little brighter just to make it look more natural. And for that, if you already used the, um, if you applied the the sky, the sky as I told you, just just by dragging and dropping, this should be a uh, a smart object. 
in this case using command or control L um, will be a great idea just to um, brighten it up because it will just appear here as levels as an adjustment and then you can just move it and it's a very very quick way to um, adjust your sky you can just move those and find the best option for you I think it this this looks a little better so I'm pretty happy and I click OK and um, one more product for me that will look great on this photo and uh, go to my website um, and check the um, lights. The light, the light effects are here. I right now have the, those cold stars, one, three, three four. Um, I will have, definitely I'll have more um, just working on them. Let's just use the star number four and apply it the same way as we did before. So just drag and drop it. And it's just like a star. Um, and if I place it over here, where the sun is was coming from, it will look great, like like a burst of, of the light coming from that, that that direction. You can just grab it and make it bigger, and click OK, and then to make it to make this black part uh, turn invisible, just change the blending mode from normal to screen, and it looks pretty good. But the color is just not right because the, um, that's the star was a little too pale <laughs> like the color is more white than the color of the light on the image so to make it look more golden go to filter camera roll, and adjust the color on the on the light by changing the temperature to something more golden and right now it looks like a weak burst of, of the setting sun I just click OK and you'll see the difference here Wow, that looks really good. So, just download all the um, all the resources from my website. You will find the rain, snow, and there will be other videos on uh, here on YouTube showing you how to apply those and how to make them look really good. And one more thing, if you want to know how I edited this image. Um, to the end of my editing you have to go to my website and check my uh, tutorials on my website and like how I started because this was the original image and this is the, the final one so you want to go and see how I did the whole work starting from the raw file ending with my uh, with my image just go to my website this is my website here and change the language here in the corner to English it works in Polish and English and tutorials go to tutorials and you have single videos right now I don't have this yet but here where you see where you should see the uh, editing resources um, so all the other um, snows and rains and, and stars and whatever you need to make your images look more magical go to single videos uh, and choose the video you like or just go to collections and get the whole collection because that's so much better because you get an, a year um, of watch of unlimited uh, watching of those videos. Click here on the on the image to see which photos um, are featured in that collection. Also, if you want to know uh, how I take the photos, how I find the light how I work with the kids, how I find my composition, how I set my camera, uh, you have to meet me for a workshop because I can't teach you that online. Go to workshops and you'll have group workshops here. I will be in so many places that I'm sure that you can find something for yourself. Um, see, this is just 2020 and this is the second site here. So a lot of workshops, a lot of plans uh, for next year. And yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you next time uh, with another um, video from me. Bye.